take a look at another vertical circle problem. We had one with the Ferris wheel. Now we have a bucket and it's attached to a string or a bar or maybe this is somebody's arm and they're spinning the bucket around in a vertical circle and inside is Rhino the hamster. And we show them at two different points in the motion here. And the first question is, what is the minimum speed so Rhino stays in the bucket so he doesn't lose contact with the bottom of the bucket? Now, if you're worried about Rhino, don't, because we all know Rhino. I need danger for breakfast. So he'll be fine. And so where is he most likely to lose contact with the bucket? That would be at the top of the circle when gravity is pulling him directly away from the bottom of the bucket. And so he's most likely to lose contact at the top. So if we solve for the minimum speed that he needs to stay in contact at the top, he will stay in contact everywhere else. So we draw a free body diagram of Rhino at the top of the circle. So we have weight acting down and also the normal force acting down. If you remember in the Ferris wheel problem, uh, Rhino would be sitting on a seat and the normal force would be up at the top of the circle. So you can see this is different. Then we want to put one direction in the direction of the acceleration. And we know in circular motion, uniform circular motion, the direction of the acceleration is toward the center of the circle. So we make positive y toward the center, which would be down at this point in the motion. So we write Newton's second law for the y motion. Some of the forces in the y equal ma. And this is a special acceleration, centripetal acceleration. And we have an equation for it, either v squared over r or omega squared times r. And in this case, I'm solving for V, so I'm using the V squared over R version. So what are the sum of the forces in the Y direction? Well, you just add up all the forces you see. There's a normal force, there's a weight, they're both pointing down, and we made down positive, so they are both positive. So sum of the forces in the Y is Mg plus the normal force, and that equals Ma. And when Rhino loses contact, the normal force goes to zero. So we're going to set the normal force equal to zero for the moment when he's just about to lose contact. And so we get mg equals mv squared over r. And the mass divides out, so we didn't need the mass of rhino. And you get the linear speed is the square root of gr. And g is 9.8, the radius 1.2. So he needs to be going 3.43 meters per second. That's not real fast, but is rhino going to be OK? All of my training has prepared me for this moment. So he's ready for that. Let's look at something else. What is the force of the bucket, in other words, the normal force, on Rhino at the bottom? And so we set it equal to zero at the top. Is it going to be zero at the bottom? Well, we don't wonder. We're going to solve for that. But again, Rhino will be OK. Well, maybe. We'll see. And so we draw a free body diagram of uh, Rhino at the bottom. And you can see in this case that at the bottom of the circle, the normal force now is up and weight, as always, is down. But what's the direction of the acceleration? It's toward the center. So now I make positive y up. And Newton's second law, some of the forces in the y equals ma, the same thing we had over here, and I'm using v squared over r because we know what v is, 3.43 meters per second. And so the normal force is in the positive direction, and the weight is in the negative. So in this case, the normal force is, has two jobs. It is holding up Rhino's weight and causing the acceleration. Whereas over here, the weight and the normal force together were causing the acceleration. And so the normal force then is mg plus mv squared over r. And we put in the mass here. I factored out m, you can see. So it's m times g plus v squared over r. And you get 15.7 newtons, which is double Rhino's weight. You may want to go and look and see how that turned out that way. But he would be OK. That would be like a 2g acceleration on a ride. If you think uh, you understand this, try this one out. What would be the normal force on Rhino at the top of the circle if we were now spinning him at 7 meters per second? 
And so in that case, there will be a normal force at the top. And then if you want, also you can figure it out at the bottom. Uh, I'll give you the answer. And so go ahead and work it out. Don't look at the answer. Here it comes. Hit pause. Okay, hopefully you didn't cheat. Um, try this one out. See how you do.